and this is CC10 again actually I'm redoing not redoing but this is more of an update regarding the A to P 10 DLC REI reply registration first of all I want to just say thank you Jake for providing me a little bit of clarity and also with your help I was able to update the guideline that I initially created for our users of REI reply I'm actually redoing the vi this video because I've been receiving a lot of messages about people that getting rejected uh, for their campaign or probably not able to get their business profile approved inside REI reply so one thing you guys need to understand is that it's critical now that you really get your business registered because what happens is after so if you would notice on this document basically it's already started last July 5th and basically after August 31st any messages that's not registered with A2P will be blocked so basically you're not going to be able to send any more messages if you don't do this so it's mandatory for all 10 digit local number users and this is going to be applicable for us for both texting and calling so again guys this is not optional all right so i think in my previous video i already discussed what this is who implemented it what is tcr and if you want to understand or if you do have more questions within the same document that i'm showing you guys there's this frequently asked questions so everything about a2p things like that it's all in this same guide okay and so i want to get down to business why is everybody getting rejected it, I think we want to discuss the pre-registration or basically the prerequisites if you're doing your A2P campaign registration. So again, first things first, I'm stated here in my document, of course, you will be needing your business EIN. Guys, this video is actually for business EIN users. If you do have sole prop, it's pretty much the same process, but you will be needing your team information. All right. And then for EIN, Again, business profile, you will be needing your articles of organization or tax filing document. Let me tell you this. Before you register, make sure that you get this document ready. Why? Because any details you will be providing inside your registration should be based on any of your legal documentation. I want to say that it's very critical that the information you enter is exactly how it is registered to the business number three which is non-negotiable too because now unlike before right unlike before um, Twilio or TCR is actually now checking the websites manually so when you do your business profile registration it is important that you do have a live business website all right and guys this is why most people are getting rejected it's because one they don't have a live business website and at the same time they actually did not meet or meet any of these following requirements and the requirements for your website is that of course you have public business contact information in there definitely your business website domain matches your legal business name so if you're like for us if our business name is kt virtual assistance then my domain should be www jtvirtualassistance.com that should match it's non-negotiable because if it's not matching you're automatically going to be rejected and let me tell you that right now everything is actually being also reviewed automatically in terms of your business information because they do have a database that matches whatever you submitted as your business information to the company to whoever you registered your LLC that has to really match and and definitely this too is most important business website your business website should include the privacy policy and website disclaimers for text and email form this document i also provided a disclaimer privacy policy that you can just easily copy and paste in your website page so like this is a two pages document that you can easily copy and paste to your website and definitely your website should have an opt-in checkbox just like what you can see here like this is a very good example with an approved tcpa content disclaimer you should never miss the disclaimer because this is the number one reason why most people are getting rejected that's because the disclaimer one is not there two is because it doesn't follow the tcpa compliance in terms of what wording should be there my advice is copy and paste this entire message and and put it in your online opt-in form okay so again this three the cin document and website very critical these are main reasons why people are getting rejected now
Okay, so let's just do a little bit of review in terms of the registration process. So, so once you have all of these details or information ready, you have your website up, things like that, then now you're ready to proceed with registration. So what's the first step? There's basically two things that you need to do inside REI Reply. So if we are to look at settings, so if I go to settings, and select phone numbers and I go to trust center you can actually see there's two things you need to do like there's a to p brand campaign registration and then there's business profile these two are basically optional right now CNAM registration is not yet available but te technically shake and steer is already available but you know the two things that you need to do to be able to send text is this two right so the first thing is definitely submit your business profile all right, so before you get a chance or before you even proceed with submitting your business profile, first thing you guys need to do is you revisit your business information in the settings page. So this is exactly what you can see here. I and mean, this is the actual thing you can see inside REI reply, right? So here you've got your friendly business name, you've got your legal business name, and any other information about your business. So in this guide, you can actually see here basically what you need to enter in REI Reply. I just want to note again, this is like I'm repeating this like a thousand times, your exact legal business name, this one, has to be the same as the one in your LLC filings remember that because if it's not you're automatically going to be rejected when you submitted your profile definitely any other information try to make sure that it matches your articles of organization again your business website whatever you're going to enter here should also match your legal business name in terms of the domain your business niche if you're in real estate do real estate definitely we're in real estate so we're going to do real estate and don't forget that for each section so there's like four sections that you needed to work on here update and save that information okay so the same thing as so there's four so this is the general information section you have the business physical address which is this one so you can see I also attach in this screenshot my articles of organization just to show you that whatever I have entered under business physical address is the same thing as what I have in my articles of organization so that's the address okay so once that's updated click on save and update and now you can move on to do like business information for EIN information so just make sure that you enter your EIN correctly with the correct format and then now you can move on to the authorized representative section so you can see guys it's more like I'm doing a review here because I've done like two videos already covering this registration part and I just want to cover the most important part so I'm just gonna scheme through the business profile information so basically once you have filled out all these sections again just double check everything and TCR is gonna automatically verify this information against their database normally it will automatically be approved but for some it may take up to 72 hours to receive your approval take note guys that once this is all updated you can now move to phone number section again to submit that business profile so go back here you go to trust center and then you click on submit for review please you know never mind or do not mind my account because this is like a trial account or and we're not really using it for a u.s campaign right now so we didn't actually register so there uh, there submit for review um and as you can see in my important note you do not need to wait for your business profile approval so you can then proceed with a to p brand and campaign registration sms so that's important guys you don't have to wait on this business profile so if it's just in review that's fine just move on to start getting your atp brand campaign registration okay so yeah let's uh, go ahead and see that process which i think is really really important and so here you can do the one-time standard brand registration click on next obviously so this is the guide i just want to follow through on this it actually says here that if you have previously submitted your business profile so this is what i'm talking about meaning we already did the business profile registration earlier so basically it you can see that all of these are grayed out that means i don't have to update them anymore you can just go ahead and select next same thing for business address and then authorized representative basically proceed with enter campaign details so I have this is one thing that I've actually revised is on my previous video because now Folio or the TCR is more particular in 
making sure that you have indicated what's really the use of your campaign and you being able to identify what is your exact campaign case type things like that it's like important because if you don't tell them how you're going to be running your business for text marketing or email marketing they probably would just reject your registration so this has to be specific how people are opting in how people are getting their messages what are your sample messages all of these needs to be detailed so i have here in my guide the step-by-step -step guideline so we've already done trying to identify the att brand we did select one-time registration and we pass the business information and in this time we're already on this page where you have to identify what campaign case use type guys don't ever think selecting any other type you just have to select low volume mix recommended okay we have people who got rejected because they did select two-factor authentication um, as you know that's a different kind of text message because it only sends people security messages for their account or whatever so just do low volume mix if you're actually into marketing okay now for the campaign use case basically this is up to 4096 characters i actually have here the, the entire messages that you can like the entire campaign case description that you can copy and paste so if you'd notice in my campaign use case i actually indicated the overall use and at the same time specific usage so like our clients will be receiving automatic form SMS, they'll be getting a confirmation SMS, they'll be getting database reactivation. So I just copy paste, copy everything that's here, and then paste it in my campaign use case description. Then I select next. And once that's done, I will now proceed with step seven and eight, which is entering the exact SMS campaign wording. So this is my example. So you can do this. So take note that you have to, of course, enter your first name, company name, this and that. So sample messages has to be there. And don't forget, guys, to enable this too, meaning to put a checkbox on these two options. And then once you're done, click on next. And here, before it was, it used to be just a general, you know, thing that, you know, end users will have to visit our website, enter the information. It's like a very vague explanation of how end user can actually opt out and to receive messages from us right actually we have to make sure that it's more specific just like what i said in terms of campaign description you can actually say okay people can actually do website opt-in they can do text message opt-in appointment booking and email marketing so that's an exact thing that i'm gonna do and I'll just edit the business name so just edit the business name in there i will have my opt-in keywords like start offer join sell i'm also gonna have my sample opt-in message in there and click on submit all right so once that's actually done take note guys that right now it takes longer to actually get your pay and registration completed so while waiting so normally you're gonna see that one is approved and then the other one is actually pending once that's actually approved and then the other one is pending you can still send messages but limit it to 100 sms a day so meaning even if it's still pending you can still send sms but just again limit it to 100 normally the approval takes up to like one two weeks worse is like two weeks we have people that get approved in just three days so like really depending on the people that's actually gonna do the uh, review so yeah just know that it might take a little bit more time when you do your campaign registration go ahead and submit once you're done and then after this so basically the post registration process is every day just go to phone numbers trust center and check if your status has been approved or declined or whether it has been it's still pending things like that so yeah just monitor the progress of your registration if you ever get rejected again review what i have here which is basically first things first did i double check if my website has this opt-in language did i have my matching domain with my business name do i have a privacy policy in my website so this is like the most critical normally you're going to be rejected for your campaign if you don't have this even this exact wording i also have here in my document that TCPA compliant content up in wording that you can actually use and if you want to do your own you can do your own by following this guideline what else is here basically shake and steer what's the process of that what's that for you can also see this in this uh, word document and i also included a couple of best practices to maintain higher uh, trust score 
But yeah, basically hope this provides you a little clarity on how you can actually do your A2P registration. Guys, the deadliest deadline is August 31st. I don't know. We don't have information whether that's going to be extended or whatnot. But yeah, anything you sent after 31st based on our information or inside information, it's going to be blocked. The thing is, loophole, as you can see here, if you don't register, definitely you can still register a toll-free number, which is, again, part of this document under FAQs if you want to know how. All right. So, yeah, again, REI Reply did not implement this. It was the campaign registry. So, don't be mad at REI Reply or Susan or David. Okay. If you guys do have any questions, let us know. This is JTVA talking. I'm actually talking behalf of JTVA. And if you ever need help to get your business registered, please do set up an appointment with our sales team. And we're happy to help you one time for your business registration. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys.